is something uh, that she doesn't do very often. She took a break. Uh, one of her colleagues will be accepting the award because she's taking a well-deserved vacation. That doesn't happen very often. Uh, Diane is a very quiet, just uh, inspiration to other lawyers. And she leads by an example simply in what she does. Uh, and somebody that I personally look up to and uh, sets a powerful and correct role. She has viewed the law for a long time as a vehicle to affect and protect people that often it's easy for us to ignore. And she has been a tireless advocate for individuals uh, with mental illness, uh, for the disabled, and has also served on the ACLU board for uh, a quarter century, which sounds longer than 25 years, but either way, it's a pretty significant commitment. Uh, she has also served as the ACLU board president, uh, which looks really like it's not too bad of a job uh, and not too time consuming. Uh, and so I said yes to do that. But it looks a lot easier because all the people that I've seen uh, serve in that role make it look easier by the kind of work that they do, uh, including the great work that Diane does. Uh, so in thanks for all that she's done, we're very pleased and I'm pleased to be the one able to make this announcement that we're uh, awarding her with the Eunice Edgar Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, we had the pleasure of working with Diana the board and we're not going to let her go uh, very easily. Uh, but she's left the board recently and has been uh, a member uh, again for 25 years, so the entire time I've been a board member, I had the pleasure of having her example. So she's out of the country, so you guys are going to have to applaud really, really loud so she'll be able to hear you. So uh, her colleague, Lynn Breedlove, will be accepting this award on her behalf. Yeah, um, Diane had a tough choice for February, Milwaukee or the Galapagos Islands. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, she had uh, bought these tickets a long time ago before she knew that she was going to be honored. She's a great lover of the ACLU, and she certainly would have her otherwise. Um, we, of course, we have a, a bunch of people from Disability Rights Wisconsin here today. We think that the ACLU made an excellent choice. Um, in fact, I think it would be no exaggeration to say that Diane Greenlee is probably the outstanding mental health advocate in Wisconsin, certainly of my generation, and I don't know anyone else that really is on quite the same par with what she's been doing for a long time. Some of you probably know Diane. For those of you who don't, I'll just conjure up a little bit of her for you. Um, Stanford graduated with a distinction. Masters in social work from Smith, JD from UW Law School. In between the two grad schools, she worked two years in the psychiatric hospital of Connecticut, which was an eye-opener for her, and one of the reasons she decided to become a lawyer. And since then, she's gotten to know a lot of people with mental illness, which I think has continued to ground her in her work as an advocate. She's never lost touch with who she's fighting for, and she still has a lot of friends who have uh, dealt with mental illness for their entire lifetime. I got to know her in the early 80s. She was working at the Center for Public Representation then, and we recruited her to come to work in our agency and head up our mental health advocacy effort, which gave us instant credibility in many circles in Wisconsin for our mental health work, and she led us to uh, be able to create a great program. She's an amazing advocate. She's brilliant. She's tenacious. She's fearless not particularly constrained by authority figures, including the, exec the executive director of her agency. <laughs> I'll just give you one uh, memorable example of this. Um, once when she felt the Department of Health and Family Services was 
caving into the nursing home industry on an important patient's rights issue. She didn't count to 10, and she wrote a letter to Secretary Linda Rivett, which ended with a fairly potent paragraph in which she said that she was really disappointed that the department had decided to be a lap dog, a, a, no, sorry, a doormat for the nursing home industry. So um, she mailed the letter. The next day, I found a copy in my mailbox. And it was so over the top, I really wasn't even angry. I just thought it was kind of funny. And a great example of Diane. And I saw Secretary Leibovitz at a, a meeting, a fairly large meeting, about a week later. And she walked by me, and she kind of raised her eyebrows and said, doormat? <laughs> that was all we ever said about it. But, uh, Diane has drafted several bills which then became law and are now in Wisconsin statutes, um, bills related to civil rights and, and mental health. She's helped uh, develop a number of programs for people with mental illness which are still in operation. She's had dozens of law clerks that she supervised, some of them are judges now, legislators, private attorneys. She's very well respected in all of those circles. Uh, the Chief Justice tonight mentioned to me that uh, to make sure I give my regards to Diane. She said that she holds Diane Greenlee in very high regard. So I'd say that's a pretty good review from the legal profession. Um, here's another example of lifetime commitment. She's been the representative, and there's only one, of low-income people on the Hearst Board for Wisconsin since 1980. That's a 29-year term. Uh, so that tells you something about her commitment. So I would say that uh, all of us at Disability Rights for Wisconsin are very honored to work with her. We're very honored that you've chosen to give her this award. And I'll just read you quickly the short statement that she gave me to read tonight. Thank you so much for this award. I am deeply honored. I have a great deal of respect for the ACLU, its values and principles, and willingness to take action to advance the civil liberties of all Americans. So the award is especially meaningful to me, coming from an organization that I respect so deeply. I've thoroughly enjoyed my many years on the ACLU of Wisconsin board and have the highest regard for my fellow board members and the organization's very capable and dedicated staff. I also want to recognize the organization where I have worked for many years, Disability Rights Wisconsin, for giving me the opportunity to be an advocate for the civil rights and liberties of people with disabilities. I regret that I'm unable to be with you this evening. I'm on a trip to the Galapagos Islands, which has been planned for about a year. So while you're enjoying dinner with Rachel Maddow, I may be swimming with sea lions <laughs> or gazing at giant tortoises or blue-footed boobies. <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful evening, and thank you very much for this honor. This evening, Rachel, Rachel Maddow. I needed to listen, and when I heard who the guest speaker was going to be, I squealed. <laughs> I mean, I squealed. People from our office just came in to see what was going on. Um, and that's because, like many people here in this room, I'm really a, a great fan of Rachel's. Um, we have three children, my husband and I do. We love them dearly, like any parents do for their own children. We would do anything for them. We're always there for them, except. Monday through Friday at 8 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> to know that I have also um, brought with me some sea lions and blue-footed boobies, so we'll be okay. We don't have to worry about missing out of the Galapagos experience while we're here. 